Welcome to the Vernon Hills Update. The update offers information about a variety of village services. You'll meet a few of your neighbors and you'll find out about upcoming events. On today's show, we'll get a behind the scenes tour of the Vernon Hills Park District Sullivan Center, which is undergoing extensive renovation, including the addition of a new gym, classrooms, and office areas. We'll get ready for the village's annual tree and menorah lighting, planned for Saturday, November 26th at the Vernon Hills Municipal Golf Course. And we'll brush up on a few Thanksgiving and holiday safety tips thanks to our friends over at Countryside Fire Protection District. Thank you for tuning in to the Vernon Hills Update. We are at the Vernon Hills Park District Sullivan Center. We're on the back side where all the action's happening. We're with Jeff Fougerou, the executive director. And we're here to get a little sneak peek tour. We're all excited about what's going on over here. But before we start, we always like to remind everybody who the park district is and how much you do. Can you remind people all about, all about how much you do here in town? Well, it's a lot. It seems like more and more every year as we uh, keep adding projects. But we, we maintain about 26 parks, close to 30 playgrounds, about 450 acres of, of parkland. There's some of it leased. We've got three community centers now at Lashen, um, the Sullivan Center, and our Lakeview Fitness Center, and then uh, our park, new park maintenance facility. So we're operating um, some pretty heavy square footage in all of our facilities as well. well. And let's talk about the Sullivan Center. We're at the Sullivan Center on Aspen Drive, which is kind of in the Hawthorne campus next to the library. And when you come around the back, we're standing in front of what will be the new entrance. Can we talk a little bit about just the scope and the fact that just having a new entrance is kind of a big deal because when this building was built, it was it was a different time in town and it didn't have as much usership, but all the things that have happened to make this important. Right, so that was one of the, I think, inefficiencies back 25 years ago was the entrance to the facility that faced south and nobody uses it. Everybody continued to come in through the east entrance, which is where all the parking was. Um, so it was a little bit of an issue in terms of just security of our preschool program, access to our control desk so we could take care of our customers. So we relocated, as you see behind us, the new entrance of the facility, which is on the east side. So no longer is there any entrance along the south uh, exposure of the building. Well, and it looks just like it's always been here. I mean, where we're standing, you can see from this corner, you can see the new gym here, you see the new entrance. It looks like it's always been meant to be here. So. Yeah, I think the architects did a great job. When you look at just the, the brick uh, work that's 25 years old and what you've matched up with the new additions of the preschool wing, our gymnasium, our front entrance, it, it's like you can't even tell the difference. It, it looks synonymous. So that was really one of the key driving forces was to make sure that just the aesthetics, the exterior aesthetics of the building was going to be something that was uniformed from past. Well, when we think about it, too, I think it was last April or March where you we talked about how there, there was going to be kind of a disruption over here and how you were going to make it all happen. A lot has happened since last spring. So when are we talking about an open house or things like that for everybody to come and see? So we're looking at spring of 2017. Probably the April, May period is we haven't decided on an exact date yet. Um, but our plan with our administrative team is to move out of the Lashen Center in uh, mid to late March and then shortly thereafter we'll have everything open at that time. The building should be open and functional, um, all, all facets, the preschool wing, the gymnasium, by uh, no later than mid-February. So then once you get all that in place, um, wait to get everything there. Let, well, let's talk for a minute about moving out of the Lashen Center. I know that's where you had your board meetings and things. So board meetings will continue, and where will people go for that come March? Yeah, so one of the things we added um, with the facility was uh, not as large of an area as the Lashen Center, the Century Boardroom there, but we have a boardroom, conference room designated for our meetings here for, for board members that meet once a month but also to have a good meeting space and conference space for a lot of the other staff. So uh, we, we plan on holding our first park board meeting in April of 2017 in the new building here. Okay, and will those be, tele you've always televised before, will that continue? That'll continue, okay. yes, that'll continue. We're, the room is gonna be outfitted with all new audio visual equipment to make sure that we, we still provide that service to the citizens. 
Okay, and as we're standing here, um, kind of in, in, in mid to late October here, um, I know you your preschool, all, things have been ongoing, nothing stopped. The preschool continued, uh, people could come over and play basketball, they could have their classes, they could do whatever. Um, tell us how you're going to phase in, because I know the, the preschool is, is the most, the, I know those parents are really excited to see what's going to happen. How that new facility is going to work and when they're going to be in it, can we talk a little bit about the preschool wing? So with, with the inception of the project, the preschool wing was, is priority one for us. We've made that really clear to our contractors. They're they're moving as quick as they can um, to get that wing completed. We fully expect that they'll be done. They tell us by early December. So our our classrooms and our teachers are right now are in temporary uh, uh, rooms within the Sullivan Center. They want to just hang on till December. They don't want it to be disruptive for that two or three week period. So what our plan is over the holiday break then we're full force we're going to get the new wing all ready to go so after the first of the year when parents and kids come back from their holiday break they'll be in their new classrooms well and let's talk about what that's like I mean, because they had beautiful classrooms before the temporary ones look really good right now but when they come in they're going to have their own dedicated entrance they've got their own they'll, the playground will be back shortly but let's talk about what they're going to see yeah so well the current classrooms that we took out were 750 square feet. The new classrooms are 1,000 square feet, so much larger space, uh, more windows, uh, um, independent restrooms within the facility, um, nice surfacing, um, new furniture. Uh, we added one classroom. We, have, we had three old. We added a fourth classroom. And then just the exterior. The exterior is all going to be secure in terms of a, a fenced-in area, gated. Um, it's, the playground is going to be ideal use for them. We're going to put a synthetic turf uh, outside the kind of the play area so that we don't have to have lawn care maintenance with our park staff. And yes, the initial entrance to the facility, you're going to have to walk right past the control desk, so one stop, and then a second stop to get into the actual um, classrooms is going to require uh, it'll be a, um, a secure system a secure operated system that only the parents in the program will be able to access well one of the other things that everybody's excited about or at least the people at my house where you've got basketball kids uh, the brand new gym so you've, you're going to have two gyms over here or actually more than two well it's two gyms I mean the current gym is a full size but can be um, you know, used as a, as a dual purpose. Uh, the current gym that we have here at Sullivan is about 7,500 square feet, same size as the new gym we're construction. So they're duplicate in terms of their square footage. Um, just gives us a lot more of an opportunity for programming. Uh, so we're excited about that. We know that the village of Vernon Hills is uh, gym shy uh, in terms of its use. And so having this extra space available for us for programming purposes is ideal. Yeah, well, and, and when we look at the building too, it, it merges right into the community room part of it really well. As, as you mentioned, I mean, you, it's going to be hard pressed to tell one from the other. They did a really good job. Yeah, they did a terrific job so far. And I think once you get the inside look, uh, and they will be the two gymnasiums, there's a short hallway that you're going to have to access one to get into the other. Um, but we're hoping that by the first of the year uh, that it's ready to go. Um, we'll be about a month into our youth basketball program, which is a huge program for the district, and be able to have the kids, um, I think, from a schedule where now we're starting at 8 a.m., we'll be able to back that up a little bit so we can, you know, start a little bit later in the day. Nice. Well, there's, that's always been such a big program around town, and to get enough space for everybody and for the games. And as you had said before, we're on the big parking lot, which is kind of behind. Um, and this this will all uh, clean up and everything. But part of, and as you're phasing into the building, the last thing though is going to be the parking lot to finish it up. Yeah, unfortunately, uh, that's uh, you know we're at the mercy of the asphalt plants, and we've got some some renovation we've got to do, still do here on this area we're standing where it took a lot of construction traffic and beat it up pretty good so probably around the first of april we'll come in and we'll finish this off as a completed project and then shortly thereafter um, everything will be done and then uh, fingers crossed we'll have a nice opening for the community we'll watch for that we'll watch for that well that this is just sullivan center the other place you've been really busy uh, let's talk over at deer path park i mean you've had the the grand opening of the beautiful um, kids castle looks great and i know you're still doing some finishing touches over there and the tennis courts can you talk a little bit about those projects yeah so the tennis courts are 
probably about early uh, November, late October, uh, that they should be completed. Um, and six quarts. We kept, uh, we, we changed the color out a little bit. We wanted to kind of keep within the, the, the Cougars colors, if you will. So we're doing a blue surface with a green perimeter. Um, all new fenced, all new netting, all new posts, uh, all new surface. So that's great. We've got a uh, uh, brand new uh, batting cage going in. Uh, that's got synthetic turf. That's behind ball field three and four at Deer Path that we completely renovated. Those are done now. Um, and really the last thing that's going on there is just we're going to be resealing all the path work from Route 45 all the way up to our Warrington, which is at the far north end of Deer Path. And then the parking lot will be the last thing we do, the Cherokee parking lot. Okay, so again, you're hoping to get it all done before the plants close down and everything there. So. Well, that's mostly uh, just sealant, okay. so we're not as concerned about the asphalt plants okay. there. Yeah. And if you haven't been to the Kids Castle, that is a beautiful labor of love from a lot of the neighbors around town. Well, so that's just a few of the things going on in addition to all the events. We won't even outline all the events because that's a lot of things happening. I know you've got um, kind of a fitness thing going on at the uh, Lakeview Fitness Center and you're challenging us all to be healthy. Sure, that's, uh, that's our 100-day uh, fitness challenge uh, for you know non-members and members. Uh, that we, we stopped taking um, program registrants on that around October 1. We had over 600 people register for that. So about half of them are non-members. So we're trying to obviously encourage our adults in the community and surrounding areas to come in and take advantage of that. There's nice incentives. So um, Lakeview Fitness Center is doing very well. We've got another program that we're going to be uh, laying out in the next couple weeks with uh, just incentivizing people. You know, you buy a year, we're going to give you two extra months free. Um, we're doing a lot of promotional work on uh, trying to um, advance our personal training program. So we've got a sale coming up on Black Friday, right okay. after Thanksgiving, um, that we'll roll out to the community. Um, a big events, you know, the annual pumpkin launch, that's the first <laughs> Saturday at Century Park at the Sled Hill. That's all sold out. Our Polar Express event in December, uh, that's all sold out. Um, we've got our Fall Fest coming up in late October. So a lot of, you know, good-sized community events coming. Well, and when you talk about that, too, you mentioned that uh, you had the Touch the Trucks was a little different this year, and you had a big crowd. Touch of Trucks was crazy. Uh, 700 people that came out. We usually are probably four to 500 people at max and yeah it was a beautiful day and i think that's what brought a lot of people out well and uh, uh vernon hills park district it's fun for the whole family so if you don't if you're not aware of what's going on i know you guys have everything on your website you like people coming to your board meetings you like to hear what's going on we love to um you know you can go to vhparkdistrict.org and see everything we've got going on on our website our we post our public meetings usually the the fourth Thursday of the month, 6.30 p.m. They're at Lashen till March of 17, and then we'll move over here to Sullivan Center. Uh, our board is always uh, receptive to hearing what's, uh, you know, what our residents are concerned about or whether they're just having, you know, a good time. It's <laughs> just the things they want to let us know about that as well. So, yeah. Well, that's a, this is a beautiful place, and we're, we're fortunate enough today. I know it's really busy around here, but you're going to give us a little tour. So sure. let's, get, let's take a little sneak peek. Okay. Well, on our quick tour, right now we're standing in what I think is a cool spot because it has to do with storage, but we're outside the new gym and you incorporated some good storage in here. Yeah, so this, this hallway here, it's about 12 by 100 um, and it's just on the back end of our community room. So those that are familiar with Sullivan, there's a stage and it's just behind that and it connects to the new gym. That's one of the things we're really short on, uh, we found is just with all the programming uh, just things like karate, where they have a lot of storage, big karate program, rhythmic gymnastics, our ping pong program. I mean, so this area is really ideal for us. And as you see in the gymnasium here behind us, um, one of the features we, you know, we're, we're kind of done. It's an energy efficient as on the rooftop are these, they're 32 pods and they're just light, they're called lightning pods, lighting pods. And so they, they bring in some outdoor light. Um, they're solar based, so it creates a nice energy efficiency to bring in uh, just some outdoor lighting inside the gym. So it cuts down on the use of actual lighting that you're going to have to use during the daytime, especially. Excellent. Beautiful space.
Well, we have moved right inside that new entrance off the back lot, and that's a beautiful arch ceiling you got going on here, but tell us what's going to happen when you first walk in here. I know the control desk is going to be in a new spot. Yeah, so as soon as you walk in through the double door set of double doors, um, you'll get greeted by our, our customer service staff, and so there'll be the control desk right as you walk in the front doors. Um, small lobby off to your left as you come in, and then that's also the secure entrance into the new preschool wing. Uh, behind the control desk, uh, we'll have room for um, some of our front desk staff that they can kind of lay their hat, if you will. They don't have space for that right now. And then just some of our year-round staff, our after-school staff, our camp directors, our pool managers. So there's a workroom uh, area behind the control desk for them to punch in, maybe put their lunch down, you know, handle any of the kind of perfunctory duties they're required to. And then all of our, our recreation staff that will be moving out of their existing wing into this new location here. And then other staff, when you go behind the existing desk, what we know, that's going to all be con con kind of reconfigured as office is still there. Right. So the existing area that most people are used to coming in by our front desk, that's going to be all closed in now. And so our admin team that are over at our, cell, our Lashen Center will be moving over to the Lashen Center into this area. Let's talk a little bit more about the preschool secure area, the fact that they're going to key in. Is that what's going to happen once you get past the first desk? Preschool parents have a code? Yeah, so similar to what we have over at the Lakeview Fitness Center for our, our um, child care, it'll be a punch system so that you got to key in. And that number changes every month. We only provide that to the parents. Um, uh, Gail Herman, who is our early childhood supervisor, her office is right there at the entrance, plus the control desk staff right at the entrance. So anybody coming and going, we got to make certain that they're um, secure people that get inside that, that, that part of the building. Well, we are in the preschool area, as you said, four big classrooms and teacher work rooms in the secure entry and an exit to the play area. Yeah, it's their own secure outdoor play area. It'll be all fenced in, gated. Um, it'll have a keypad on it as well so that people from the general public can't get in. Um, it'll have synthetic turf as a surface so that once again it's just year-round uh, activity. It'll be just adjacent to the, pre uh, to the playground area so um, it, I think it's going to be ideal uh, for all. Especially I think we, we wanted to make sure the teachers were inclusive in terms of decision making and things that they wanted to see outfitted in their room so we did that uh, right out of the gate and wanted to make sure they needed storage, they wanted independent restrooms, good, good, um, good window space within, good floor space for the kids to do activities. Beautiful, it's going to be beautiful. We are standing at actually the old entrance. You can kind of tell if you look around where the old entrance, which is now, um, I guess when you step out into the outside, what people used to walk up the sidewalk, this is the new conference room. Yeah, so everything was enclosed from the old entrance, the canopy, and we saved some of the architecture uh, that withstood. And it's going to become a new boardroom slash conference room for the staff and, and the board. Okay, and, and as we talked about before, it, you will have capability of transmitting so we can see it on TV too. That's correct, yeah. So it will be completely outfitted with you know, cameras and microphones, and so a um, little smaller quarters, um, but everything, you know, I think just state-of-the-art updated equipment that we're, we're purchasing and putting in. And you can use it for other things besides just the, the board meetings, too. Oh, yeah, exactly. A lot of trainings that we do year-round. Uh, we're working closely with the Lions Club. I know they're looking for moving out of Lash and for a new place, and we're working with them to use the room once a month as well. And when we look off to the side here, then this is where some of your, your staff, that's uh, year-round staff, is going to be working out of this area. Yeah, all of our recreation team and then uh, our front desk staff uh, that handle all kind of our operations for the district, they'll be in this, this particular wing of the building. Well, it's kind of interesting to see this because, you know, this, this was at the outside. So to get a scope of where we are and what the footprint is, it's going to be exciting to see how this all comes together and finishes off. So. Yeah, so, I mean, one of the things going back, I mean, the, the entire 
um, build out was about 17,500 square feet. So this particular wing with the boardroom, conference room, and our new recreation wing was about 7,500 square feet that we added of um, renovated and new space. When you think about that too, I guess we should get down to business as taxpayers too. You figured out how to do this without having to go for a referendum or new money or anything like that. Yeah, so we had a bond issue that was, was approved uh, in 2015. Um, it was a six million dollar issue that we did, uh, stretched out over a little, about 17 or 18 years. And no, no tax increase. That was something that the board is very cognizant of. So it's just a matter of us rolling over our debt and refinancing our debt. The rates were outstanding. It was just something we had to do with some of the aged facilities that we're experiencing. And so by fixing this building up, um, I think over the long run, it's really going to be conducive for the district in terms of just operating at a more efficient basis. Everybody in one spot and poised for the future. Well, the savings just alone leaving Lashen Center, uh, which we were renting for a dollar a year from the village, um, you know, ex are into the six figures, the low six figures uh, for us. That you know, and a lot of duplicative efforts that we're doing at Lashen, we're doing at Sullivan. So we combining that, you know, is going to be a savings to us. It wasn't. It wasn't the dollar rent. It was just maintaining and upkeeping and doing the repairs that were on the horizon for that. Place. Yeah, and that's, um, you know, I've been uh, in communication with John Calmer quite a bit over the last few years about, you know, the potential or possibility that we may be relocating out of Lash and, and shared with him some MEP studies, mechanical electrical plumbing studies we did on the building. And yeah, it's an, an excess of $500,000 to get things up to standard and it just wasn't, I don't think on our, from our perspective, not as an owner of the facility, that it was wise decision for us to do that. Okay, and I know that's what the village is wrestling with right now, how to handle that. So all these things, people keep, a, keep, a, keep aware, come to the board meetings, whether it's the park district, the village, and uh, enjoy the new facility. Thanks, Lynn. We are fast approaching the holiday season, and here in Vernon Hills, we like to recognize those changing of the seasons. We're with Lisa Fishbeck at the Village Hall, and one of the things we want to remind everybody of is the village tree and menorah lighting uh, coming up on the Saturday after Thanksgiving. So can we tell people what that is, when that is, what they can expect? Oh, yes. On Saturday, uh, November 26th, at the golf course at 291 Evergreen Drive, we will have our holiday tree and menorah lighting ceremony. Um, residents, families, children alike are all invited out to the golf course. Um, Santa Claus and Mrs. Claus will be there this year. Uh, they have cleared their schedule and they will be arriving with the fire department. Um, and they will be uh, welcoming all the children and uh, the families to the golf course. There will be cookies and hot cocoa and cider available for everybody. So we encourage you all to come out to um, meet your neighbors and ring in the holiday season with the mayor and the queens and Santa and Mrs. Claus. Yeah, and I, that's, that's always the tradition, too. The, the, the time to flip the switch goes to the mayor, kind of directs the queens. It's one of their queenly duties. Yes, it is. It's one of their queenly duties. <laughs> and everybody, like you said, uh, Countryside uh, graciously uh, polishes up one of their uh, engines, and that's how we uh, we have uh, St. Nick and his wife. Yes, they, they have to they have a special place to land the sleigh, so, and Countryside Fire Department is always there to help us out and make sure that they get to where they're supposed to be. Excellent. So that's coming up this Saturday after Thanksgiving. It's just a family. It's it's free it's just fun it's casual it's a nice time to get together and kind of start the holiday yeah santa's schedule is pretty well packed so um residents start arriving around quarter after four um and the hot cocoa and everything santa will usually show up about quarter to five and then he's not there very long so you'll have to make sure that you get there but bring out the kids and the family's grandma you know it is it is uh, a real fun event 
So that's coming up November 26, right after Thanksgiving. Another thing we talk about often when we get into the holidays is um, that's when oftentimes we're in the more of a giving spirit and what can we do to give back. And you are one of the uh, points of contact where we can get connected with the uh, Libertyville and Vernon Township food pantries. And I know that you do a lot of collections or help facilitate people. Can we talk about the food drives that you can help with? Oh, absolutely. Um, we collect year-round uh, for the Vernon Township and Libertyville Township in our lobby. You can also drop off items at the police department and our public works facility. Um, if you would like to organize a food drive within your, uh, your office, your place of work, um, we can coordinate to have those food items picked up so you don't have to bring trek them over here. Um, but it's the season where um, people do need help, and it's, it's not just the holiday seasons, it's a year-round event. Um, residents that are in need of assistance, um, if you live south of Route 60, you can always go to the Vernon Township uh, Food Pantry. If you live north of Route 60, you can always go to the Libertyville Township, uh, which is off of Winchester and Libertyville. And, and we say that because Vernon Hills kind of stra we're right on the line between the two townships. And th so the, the Libertyville one is up in, on Winchester. How do we explain where the Vernon Township one is? Uh, the Vernon Township office is at 3050 Main Street in Buffalo Grove, right over by the Prairie View train station. That's what's confusing to me. That's Prairie View to me, so it's hard to remember Buffalo Grove. But it's, uh, it is the time of the year, so if you're out doing some shopping, just a little extra, you know, can go a long way for a family in need. Well, and I know the, ta the townships, they take non-perishable things, they take uh, toiletries and things like that all the time, and they, they accept donations because oftentimes people come in and they need something that way. Right. It's anything that you would like to get them, to, you can either bring them here or, um, again, I can always coordinate a pickup at, at your your rest or your uh, uh, offices or whatever. So it, it's, it's just one of the little services that we offer. Excellent. So that's coming up. If you, uh, you or your organization has a food drive going at any time of year, Lisa can help you with that. Um, the Vernon Hills Village Food Drive goes on all year round. And uh, again, hope to see you on Saturday, November 26th at the Tree and Menorah Lighting. It'll be a great time. Oh, yes. See you there. We are at Countryside Fire on Deer Path Drive. We're with Fireman Tony. Fireman Tony, you've been busy in the schools because I know through the month of October it's, uh, it's uh, fire safety. So you've been training our kids. Now it's time for you to remind us about what we're supposed to do on November 6th when we change our clock. Change the batteries in your smoke alarms. Yeah, when we change our clocks, folks, we want to change the batteries in our smoke alarms, and that's twice a year, coming up November 6th. Now, we don't have to wait for that November 6th date, but keep that in mind. Fall and spring, let's get some fresh batteries in our smoke alarms. And that's not the only thing you want. You want to make sure if it's getting, if your, your equipment is aging out a little, you want them replaced. Absolutely. Don't wait. Check the date. Every 10 years, replace your smoke alarms. On the back of each smoke alarm is a date, and you'll know, okay, this is the start date, 10 years post, okay. change out those smoke alarms. Mm -hmm. And you like, you always tell the kids, too, not only some of the things you want them to do, one of them is test those things every month and make sure they're working. Yeah, we, we like to remind you guys to test your smoke alarms monthly as well, and I always ask the students, when's the last time you asked mom and dad to test them? It doesn't take but reaching up and pushing the button and holding it for a second or two and making sure it's working. And there are rules about that as far as you're supposed to have something on every level and the bedrooms and all those things. You're supposed to have carbon monoxide detectors. There's a lot of things you, that people need to be doing. Not just be, it's, it's good for them, but there are rules too. We like to make sure you have at least one smoke alarm on every level and the basement's considered a level. Now I, I tell the students that, hey, if you got more than one on every level, that's better protection. We want you to hear the beep where you sleep. Okay, very good. So that's November 6th. 
or whenever you get to it, it's important to do it twice a year and then get them switched out. Sooner than later. Yeah, that's that's your goal. So now let's talk about as we come in in November, we start having more indoor activities. we got Thanksgiving coming up. Um, I know cooking fires are something that's kind of on you guys' mind because that is a place the kitchen can be somewhat dangerous. I don't want to sound morbid about it, but it kind of is a place with some with some hazards, especially when you're having a big family get together and you got a lot of food cooking. Well, our, our statistics, countryside fire statistics and national statistics show that during the holiday season, that's November and December, there's the most kitchen fires that time of year. What should people be doing? I know some of the things are simple. Uh, you say always have like hand mitts. Well, we want to protect ourselves from getting burned. So yes, two oven mitts when you're pulling something hot out of the oven. Make sure you have the proper tools such as slotted spoons or pancake turners to handle any of the food items to prevent yourself from getting burned. Make sure you have the lid available to the proper size pan or pot that you're using so that in case a fire does flare up, we can put the lid on it, smother that fire, and then shut off the heat, of course. Okay, let's go over that again, because if you do get a fire on the stove, it's, it's simple. It's, it's smother it and, and put out the heat. Shut off the heat, put the lid on it, you should be good. Okay. Give us a call if you're ever in doubt. When in doubt, call it out. Okay, Nine sounds one. good. So, and I know, too, when we've got like, decorations out on the table, you get very jumpy about candles. Well, candles we know are used during the holiday season, religious events and things like that. But when you go out, blow them out. We really don't want to leave candles burning unattended when you leave the house, go to a different part of the house, or go to sleep. Okay, so like you get up from the dining room table, blow them out before you go in the, and, and clean up in the kitchen. Absolutely. Those are pretty simple things to do, but uh, it's it's kind of scary to hear about statistics where like the kitchen is is the is the place of injury. So we'll, and we'll remember to call you if we do need you. Um, another thing that you're seeing that you want us to think about is as we turn on our furnaces or we start up our fireplaces inside, because things are getting to be that kind of weather. What you need us to be checking our chimneys. Well, this this is the time of year now. November, if you have a fireplace, let's get it inspected and serviced annually. That's what's recommended. We've already had a chimney fire, unfortunately, and due to the fact that sometimes things build up, that soot builds up, that coal that's going up the chimney builds up. So we recommend getting your fireplaces serviced annually as well as your furnaces. Clean filter, make sure all combustibles are at least three feet away from those heat sources such as a fireplace and a furnace. Well, what's nice too, I know when they do come in and clean your chimney out or take a look at it, they can look for breaks and things because sometimes that V vent, I think it's called, they can just corrode and then you got all kinds of issues. And, and that's why it's so important to have those inspected and serviced annually. Well, and you've seen it. You, you, it's not just an empty concern. You've seen it already. So, all right, we'll, we'll work on that. Um, as we come into winter, and you said keep a clear zone around things. That even is for little space heaters. And I know nowadays you go and you buy a space heater, and it's like, oh, it's a cool touch. It's safe. You still want everything away from it. It might be cool touch, but it will build up heat on any combustible that's within three feet, and that could allow that combustible to ignite. Combustibles are anything made out of wood, paper, and plastic. Keep that space heater at least three feet away from any of those types of items. And as you showed us uh, in last uh, month's episode, there's an awful lot of stuff in our, our homes that go up, uh, goes up awful quick, so we got to be careful. Take a look around the house. We have what we call a lot of fuel in our house, anything made out of wood, paper, and plastic. Yeah. Pretty much everything, right? Yes. Pretty much everything. Well, let's talk, too, as we get to the end of the month. I know a lot of people were putting up different types of holiday decorations. We pull those boxes out. Sometimes we see kind of a tangle of brittle and wires and some things that don't look so good. We start our cussing as we're trying to straighten it out. But I know you guys have concerns, too, about the type of decorations we put up. When you're pulling those last year's holiday lights and decorations out, make sure there's no frayed cords, frayed uh, lines, if you will, electrical lines, no missing bulbs. Make sure that you have underwriter laboratory that's UL listed, holiday lights. Use a power strip versus a bunch of different extension cords. We don't want to use all these extension cords that can cause some problems. Power strips have that breaker. If if it's overloaded, that breaker pops, shuts down the power, much safer. 
so that we got that to look forward to then too. And I know there's a lot of you can go like to the store and get some some new um, strings of lights, and oftentimes they aren't quite as hot burning. You know, some of the newer stuff has a little bit newer technology, and it's not terribly expensive. But if you've got some of the lights like mine where they almost crunch when you touch them, I think I better be looking. It might be time to replace your lights then, Lynn. <laughs> I'm thinking about not wanting to put the lights up anyway. So, uh, well, that's a lot. We've gone through a lot of things for everybody as they get ready for the holiday season, whether it's decorating or cooking or entertaining. Um, but the most important thing is just to, just to be aware. And I know you guys are always ready. If somebody does have a problem and they just want you to check it out, you guys are ready to jump into action. That's what we're here for. When in doubt, call it out 911. And if I can just dovetail on the holiday lights help us keep the wreath red you'll see a big wreath with red light bulbs on it and that's good if there's any type of holiday decoration or holiday light fire then we will replace a red bulb with a white bulb so help us keep the wreath red this holiday season by checking your holiday lights and making sure they're all safe and I know you've, we've had some good years and some bulb-changing years for you guys. So let's, let's keep it red all year round. So. Yes, thank you. Very good. So remember, if you do have a question, call over here, go online. If you have an emergency, 911, they'd rather hear about it sooner than later, right? Absolutely. And um, I wish you and your staff over here and all your crew a uh, happy Thanksgiving to y'all. On behalf of Countryside Fire District, happy Thanksgiving to all you. Well, that wraps up this edition of the Vernon Hills Update. If you have comments or suggestions, please contact Mike Storto at 847-918-3560 or email Mike S at vhills.org. Thank you for tuning in to the Vernon Hills Update.